Good afternoon once again, episode three of Straight Talk with Mr. Daly. It's a four episode season, so don't worry, I'll only have to suffer through one more. And if you missed Thursday's episode two, I'm here for you. Hear the music, move to class. We were talking about not being late in the morning, arriving before, before 8 a.m. and moving from there. So <clears throat> now, today we're gonna be talking about how we're gonna recover academically from the pandemic because it's been a long year and a half and we have a bit of an academic hangover and we gotta take some actions as a school to try to start recovering from it. So I have three main points today and the first one I call the power of zero. I was in a class this morning, um, and I won't identify the teacher or the class, but a few weeks ago, they had a class average of 43%, 43%. And so what the teacher did to remedy the situation is she devoted 25 minutes of every class to the elimination of zeros. Because zeros, students, make such a difference, so they do such damage to your academic average. Let me give you an example. It's the example I used with the class this morning. If I get 65% on three tests in a row or three units in a row, and I go into my fourth, and for whatever reason I don't hand it in, I take a zero. You know, if you really look at that person, they probably are a 65% student who just happened not to hand in that one item. Well, 65 plus 65 plus 65 plus zero divided by four comes out to a number, 48.75, just under 50. 48.75 is not representative of that student, but that's their average, and you know why? Because of the zero. So you see that class this morning, they took a class initiative, devoted two hours of class time to the eliminations of zeros, and they did the class average after, and it went from 43% to 65%. So congratulations to that teacher and to those students for remedying the zero, but there's a greater lesson for the community. If you're not handing things in, you're on a pathway to, towards a lower average than you really deserve, and it's not representative of what you are as a student. You just make sure that you don't, you don't miss things and end up with zeros. Secondly, though, we gotta take things one step further at St. Thomas More. We're not uh, just sick, simply looking to eliminate zeros. We want you to put your best effort into everything that you do. And to that, I'm gonna illustrate that with a little bit of a story from my recent kitchen renovation. So I had these guys put in all the cabinets and all this kind of stuff, and they were paid. And after two full days of work, they, dropped, they drove away. And I looked around and I realized, you know what, they're missing one little piece of trim. Now I myself, I'm pretty handy, and I can do just about anything with construction. So I called the guy and I said, you know, you just forgot that one piece of trim. And we had talked about it earlier on in the day. And I said, just point me where it is, and I'll, I'll cut it and I'll put it up. Don't worry about it. But you know what he said to me? That's not how it works, sir. You paid us to do the job, we do it right, and you're happy with it, that's how it works. I'm coming back, will you be there tomorrow morning? And we were, in, and so he came, back, he came into, my mor into my house the next morning, before eight, and it was a quick job, and then he had to drive to Milton to continue the job. But the point is that when you do something, it's a representation of you and you take pride in your work. And it's very, very important that we can't just flick a switch on that in our professional lives. We start doing that in high school. Every time you hand in an assignment, every time you take a test, it's a, representative, a representation of you. And you should be putting your very, very best foot forward every time. And finally, I'm gonna issue a challenge to all students, although I'm really directing it towards people that aren't currently doing this. And that is to, to devote one hour of focused time every day to your school outside of school hours. Because I believe that we got into a, a, le um, a malaise during the, the pandemic. For some of us, we're stuck on our phones, we got attached to our devices. And you know, those apps that eat our time and energy, they're written by brilliant people whose mission is to keep you on that screen, to, to discourage you from getting back to your schoolwork and to the things that you know are better for you. And I'm asking you for one hour of consistent, dedicated schoolwork outside of class. We finish class here at like 2.40ish. That still leaves a lot of time for you to socialize, uh, surf, watch television, whatever you do. One hour is not too much. 
but you have to sustain that for three weeks because that's the challenge. Everybody can do it for a day. I submit to you that if you do it for three weeks, it's likely to become a habit. That's something that was taught to me a long time ago. Do something for three weeks, it becomes a habit. I think that habit will result in higher marks. It'll result in improved relations with your teachers, probably better relations with your parents when they see you focused on your work for one hour every day for three weeks. And so I ask you to do that, and I look forward to the good results. I know together, St. Thomas More, we can overcome the, the hangover that we're suffering through, this pandemic hangover. And for you, there's only one more episode of Straight Talk with Mr. Daly. So I hope that you'll, uh, thank you for your time. Thank you for your attention. Thank you to Mr. Marlin for making this happen. And we'll see you again tomorrow for the final Straight Talk of season one with Mr. Daly.